hello and welcome to my uh, YouTube channel. My name is Nafula and today we have a very important guest. He's very knowledgeable about green card matters. I know the green card lottery is coming out, so I know everybody's anxious. Uh, everybody's looking to get more information about the green card. And that's why we have invited uh, Mr. EMB Scholars. So he's going to introduce himself and tell us what he does. Okay, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to be on your wonderful channel. You're uh, welcome. My name is Ernest Boniface Makurilo, so the EBM is the abbreviation of my name. Uh, mm -hmm. And the, I have been do, working on uh, so many things related to the immigration. And one of the aspects of the immigration is talking about the Green Card Lottery, the Diversity Visa Lottery, applications, the results coming to America, starting the life in America. So that is one of the component of things which I do. But on that, I do other aspects of the immigration. I write books. And uh, living the dream. <laughs> oh, it seems you're doing a lot of things, I guess. You're a busy man. Thanks for being <laughs> on, thanks for taking your time to be on the show to actually educate the community. Thank you so much. So today I want to talk about something that's very relevant. You know, the green card lottery DV results are coming out in May. So we want to get everybody ready. So today we're going to talk about the most important thing. Once you win the green card lottery, you have to submit the DS-260. And today we'll be talking everything about the DS-260. So, Mr. Ernest, just tell us um, a little bit about just the introduction, the DS-260. What is that? When do you have to file that? And all that information about the DS-260. Yes. Uh, so, first and foremost, uh, usual, obviously, the results will be coming out May, to be exactly on May 6th. Mm -hmm. When the results are coming out, many people do not know what next step. Some people, they think, okay, the results are out today, I'm going to America. No, you are not going to America that day. <laughs> uh, there are steps. Mm -hmm. Even if you are the winner, you have to fill the visa form. We usually say DSC 260, DSC 260, but some people might not understand. Or there are some people who came to America or have applied to the U.S. visa before, but maybe when they applied, they use another form they call DS 160. So these are two different numbers and is a vastly different type. So the 160 usually is for non-immigrant. Non-immigrant visa, like a student visiting those other smaller stuff, meaning you are coming to America not to become an immigrant. You are coming to America just on temporary situation. Study, mm -hmm. go back to your home country. Mm -hmm. Visit, go back to your home country. Is not to become immigrant. Because in the legal way in America, immigrant means a green card holder. That's why it's called the immigrant visa. So the DSC 260 is a special visa to come to America and become a permanent, to become a green card holder. So that is a start. Okay, so pretty much like the 160 for non-immigrant, you have to prove at the embassy. You are coming back to not, your country. Yep, you are not staying here, you're going back. But then the two, DS 260, you have to prove that you're not going back. It's just like you are coming to America and you are coming here to stay on the permanent basis if you want. So, if you have to do that, there are a few things we have to consider. Number mm -hmm. one is not just because the results are out, you have to rush and fill the form. Because since you applied for the DV lottery last year in October up to November, mm -hmm. there are so many things have changed, maybe in your life. Maybe you had a child. Maybe you are single, now you are married. Maybe you are married, now you are divorced. Maybe someone died in your family. Maybe you have adopted a child. So there are certain things have changed. So just to review yourself, is there anything in my personal life is a critical change which I need to have extra documentation for that before mm -hmm. you to fill the form? So for the DS-260, I know when people apply for the green card lottery, some people, you know, make some mistakes either with the last name, middle name, or high school. Maybe, you know, it says high school degree and people interpreted that as a degree. So maybe they filled in the wrong information, like in the education. So which parts of the DS-260 can be changed and which ones cannot? Very good questions. Because there are mistakes if you do on the DV lottery applications will not affect you. And there are mistakes when you do there, they will come to cost you. For instance, you mm -hmm. had a child on the day of the application, even if the child is one day old, and you said you don't have a child, mm -hmm. if you come to fill that child, if you win, according to the instruction, you are automatically rejected. You are because you lied on your application. Yes. 
Correct. If you are married, legally married, and they said you are not married, that mm -hmm. is a different story. You are going to be denied. I understand that there are some people, maybe they don't have the marriage certificate, they did it traditionally. Those cases only say I'm not married, whatever, those are not a big deal. But you have the marriage license from the government. Mm -hmm. You are married and you say you are not, and you shop the marriage certificate of you are married all these years before, you are going to be denied the visa. There are mistakes people do. Birth, date of birth, for instance, that doesn't affect you. Mm -hmm. But there is a trick on that. Because my nephew, I applied for my nephew and I made a mistake myself. And he won. So what you do is when you are going to fill the DST 260, you will need the information, which is confirmation number, case number, year of birth, whatever the birth details, blah, 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 and to go to sign in the visa form. Mm -hmm. So if you made a mistake, like on birth details, you must use the wrong information you added there. So because KCC, they do not know if there, that is the wrong information. Mm -hmm. If you put a wrong name, for instance, my last name is Makulilo, and you put Makulili or Makulolo, whatever it is, mm -hmm. on the DSA 2 what where you are going to sign in, you must use the information you use in the application. So that it lets you in. in. And mm -hmm. once you are in, then you will be able to put the correct last name, okay. put the correct date of birth. Because those information are going to put inside your full name, date of birth, whatever, those will be reflected on your green card, which will be given. So just to clarify, if you had the wrong date on your application, you had the wrong name, order name, or whatever in your application, you can correct that when you complete your DS. While you are inside the DS-260. Correct. But to enter, you must use those wrong information. Wrong because information. in the eyes of KCC, those mm -hmm. are not wrong information. So, yeah. with the DS-260, results are coming out on May 6th. When will somebody be required to apply? What is the best time to complete the DS-260 and submit it? And why do you need to submit it at that time? Usually, we say it's as soon as possible. Mm hmm Yes, it is first come, first served basis, but depending on your case number. So if, first of all, for those who don't know this case number, once the results are out, when you are given, like you are a winner, you will be randomly given specific number. That number is going to determine when you are going to have the interview. So if, let's say, your number is between 1 to 2,000, obviously, for sure, we know your interview is in October. Mm-hmm. But if your case number is 30,000, you don't need to rush to fill between June, May, June, July. You have, there's no rush. Yes, you need to fill, but you don't rush it while you don't have the correct information. Okay. Because your interview is supposed to be on March, April, May going forward. So the lower the number, your case number, the faster you need to complete the DS-260. But there are certain things which we are clarifying here you need it to have in order to fill that DSC 260 because you say you have to fill it as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. But as long as do you have a passport, because now there is no passport requirement in applying for the diversity visa lottery. Mm -hmm. Let's say you don't have the passport, you have to apply for the passport first. Correct. You don't have maybe maybe you are, you, are, you have a child doesn't have the passport, get the passport. You are you have a spouse have the passport. Because in the end, you will feel it. And then you ask, can you unlock and whatever? So you give unnecessary stress. Collect the, all the information, go and put it. And the other crucial, it looks like a small information, but it's a crucial one, mm -hmm. is the address of where you are going to stay in the United States of America. So that's the call course, the course. correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. You have to find it. It's not easy to get it, but you have to find it. It's a residential address. So it can't be a post office address. It has it to be, be a address. post office. It cannot be an address of the Walmart. No. So okay. if you have the home address of someone and you have all the other information which are required, which are passport, you are able to fill the DSC 260 while the other things are going forward. But there are some people on the host. Maybe you don't have the host right now. It might take maybe a longer time. And your number maybe is maybe, you know, like I, I have to make sure that I have the number, whatever, like the interview will be soon, maybe October, November, December, and you have to fill it soon. You can ask any person in America 
you know, whatever, even if it's not your host, ask it if they can allow to use their address. But I'm not coming to stay at your home. I'm just using this address so that I can complete this application while I'm looking for the host. And, and then they can change later. Yes. To change, you just write it to KCC. Mm -hmm. And you don't need to give you the reason. You just please open my case. I have to make some changes. But you cannot make any change once you receive the interview date. So once the interview date is done, you cannot open your DS-260. All the changes you are making, the embassy doesn't know. Mm -hmm. The embassy will know. Once they say today you are scheduled for the interview, you have four to six weeks in it, most likely six weeks. In that between time, when the day they give you the interview date, that information is locked for the embassy to see that information now. But before now, that, you can go in, change education, do whatever you want. The embassy doesn't know. And then once you have an interview date, you cannot locked. unlock it. It's locked and you cannot yeah. change it. Unless others, the embassy give that permission. There is a way, a situation, it can happen. Maybe a child is born one week before the interview. You can ask the embassy, there is a way they can do to allow you to go to add that person over there. Okay, so and now... the DST 260, I want to add something which is also is very crucial. Mm-hmm. Adding someone, so let's say you are married on the day of the application, and in the application of the developer, you added your spouse in the application. Mm -hmm. If you win by default, when you sign in the principal applicant, if he's signing there, you will see Ernest Macurillo, you will see the name of the spouse here on, on the below. Okay. And if you added the children on the day of the application, by default, they will be there, their list. But mm -hmm. let's say if you get married after the DV lottery applications, so your spouse will not be there. So you have to manually add your yeah. spouse. So that brings us to an important question. You said something about the passport, everybody needing a passport. So what if you win the green card lottery, you have a spouse, you have kids, but you don't intend to immigrate with them? Do you need their passport in for No, me? you don't need them. Why? Because on the lottery, the many applicants will say, I'm coming to America. They will ask you, you have children, you put their names. Mm -hmm. Remember, I'm saying slow. As long as you mentioned you have children in the beginning. If you said no, <coughs> you have to say no. <laughs> You're in trouble. <laughs> You're in trouble. So if you say you have children, you are married, but you don't want to come, they ask, are you relocating? Are you coming to America with your children? Mm -hmm. If you say no, I'm not coming with them. I'm not, I'm not coming with them. Meaning you will not feel the idea C260 because your name will be here. And then you have to go here manually, add all the information of another person so that they can be given the visa. So if you say no, you don't need their passport. You don't need any other information. So leave all the things empty. And they don't need even to pay for the medical. They don't need to pay for the visa fee. But I have my personal opinion on that. Mm hmm Unless otherwise you have so much problems in your life, you don't want your family to come to America. Do whatever it takes for them to come along with you in America. You might not be ready financially, whatever it is, I understand, but find a way. Come together today and tomorrow, if they want they to travel back to, back to Kenya, back to Ghana, back to Nigeria, back to Tanzania. If they want to go back, let them go back. But they have to get that opportunity. Because sometimes, once you say, I'm not coming with them, that offer of automatically give, being given a green card is out of the window. Mm -hmm. Meaning, if you're already in America, you want them to come, you have to sponsor them. So it will be a green card holder mm -hmm. sponsoring a child. You are not a higher priority than a US citizen. So it will take longer. Mm -hmm. So it's not like being here and yes. you just, oh, I'm bringing my child from Africa. No. Mm -hmm. Is yeah. another process. So which means like when you talk about being a citizen, that will take you five years to be a citizen, to be a priority. Yes. Before you can actually... If you're a Greek and holder, if you apply for your spouse or your child, it will take two to three, four years for the process to go through. So it's better to use this opportunity. Yes, you say, I, yes, it will be stressful to be there. But just come today, even if they are not going to your host, after being something that you have entered in America, get out, get another plane, come back to Africa. Yeah, so they can get to the U.S. and turn and around. The next out. day, or even after the airport port of entry, you are mm -hmm. arriving at Chicago, you are arriving at JFK, get off JK, get the stamp, give them this envelope, and go to the next door, get another plane, go back to Africa, no problem. You are already a green card holder.
Okay, and then you can come back anytime because you yes. already have the. But visa. as long as you don't stay for more than six months, you are good. If you stay for six months and below above, you must get the permission under the advance parole. Or if you exceed that time without notifying, you lose your green card, but not forever. In order to come back again, you have to apply is what we call returning green card holder. You have to pay 330 again to be given the visa to get another green card when you come back. In and that's not guaranteed as well. They can say no. Now that you bring up that point, uh, while we're still talking about the children and how to come here. So, for example, you don't have like a host. A host can only host you, right? And then you have children back there. You process their visa. They get the visa. How long can they stay there before they can join you? On the yes, same that, that is a very good question. So you can impress everybody have the visa. Mm -hmm. But let's say the one person can say, I'm going. Let's say the husband say, I'm going. Or the wife say, I'm going, the first person. The mm -hmm. other can stay there not exceeding six months because the visa will be having on this temple is going to expire after six months. So you can come here, do your work hard, get the apartment, and get them flat ticket to come here. That's why when you win the lottery, even if you're a family, husband and wife, for instance, both will be given separate envelopes when they are coming to America because they can travel separately to come to America. The only exception mm -hmm. of you must travel together, you must, is like this way. We know in Africa, Nigeria is the only country at the moment which is not eligible. Mm -hmm. So if Nigerian is marrying a Kenyan, Nigeria will be allowed to apply based on the country of eligibility of the wife and the Kenyan will be allowed to apply. So if mm -hmm. Nigerian wins, cannot travel without the Kenyan because they claim the eligibility yes, based on the wife so we must come but if your husband and wife no matter who wins anyone can come if you're both from the country of eligibilities so quick question about that so when a husband wins and then you know the derivatives are the wife and the kids so does the principal applicant need to immigrate first once they get all they get the visa or anybody no. if you're given the visa and the envelope Everybody can come at any time, as long as it's within six months. Okay. Each person is treated independently. Obviously, a minor cannot come alone in seven months, I mean, seven years old, but a husband, like adult, can come. If you have a teenager who is 19 years old, can come alone. Okay. Yes. So, literally, like, if maybe the principal applicant gets a visa and they don't show up, they don't want to go to America, yes. then the, the family can still... Yes. The yes. only problem is this one. Mm -hmm. Before the interview, you have to treat the person who has won the DV lottery very carefully, a very big care. Because if that person dies, yeah, before the visa interview, then game that's... over. <laughs> For all. <laughs> the higher security guards and everything, make sure you protect the principal applicant. Yeah, for all costs. You have to protect <laughs> the principal applicant not to die or to change their mind to go on there and say, I, I'm not, I'm, they're not coming with me. Because has that right? <laughs> So we have situations where somebody wins a green card lottery. Maybe they played or I played for them. You know, some people play for other people. So I play for a principal applicant, a random stranger. They win the green card lottery. And then I'm like, before I give you the confirmation number, you have to marry my sister in Africa. I have so over 10 one? cases of that one. Mm -hmm. Three in Ghana. But most of these cases are in Kenya. Mm hmm and this is what I'm trying to explain to people. Uh, according to the law, that is immigration fraud, is illegal. And you, if you report that situation, the person will be in trouble. Mm -hmm. That's why I usually tell people, me being in America doesn't mean that if I fill the form for you, you have higher chances. If God wants you to win, whether you feel it by yourself, or I even feels you, or the fuller is going to fill that form. You all going to win. It doesn't matter who is going to fill. Mm -hmm. So there are two situations. Number one, fill by yourself, or do as a business. Ask someone professional to fill for you. If it's a business, that means they finish. They give you a confirmation number. Each person goes wherever. So it's not about this one. There is another case. Someone the woman was about like let's say 25 and the, the person in america 
finish the form the woman won and say you have to marry my relative and the relative was 65 years old hasn't been even like he's 37. like there is no way if you go to the interview like this is fraud there is no way mm -hmm. this model like you are you're talking about this instagram model like is going to marry to this person like mm -hmm. it doesn't even make sense so for me like That's if you want someone to feel for you better mm -hmm. to pay that person it is a transaction mm -hmm. and make sure they give you your confirmation number important because if you do that way Mm -hmm. It's a very, because if you report that one, even if someone in America, you can report to the US embassy and report to the police, that person in America will go to jail. Yeah, exactly. It's a big thing about like, you know, fraud yes. and stuff like that. So, I remember one person was charged 5,000. No, no, the person said, don't marry, no. I need 5,000 so that I can give you a case number. Wow. I told you, just report to the police, report to the US embassy, report to America. So the person who, I, so I, I drafted like a small letter, like I pretend to be a lawyer in Kenya. I say, I'm this and this and this, whatever. I put that one in there, maybe another, uh, another, what, another letter, like pretending to be a lawyer in America. So I sent two letters, one from America, I say, send to this person, like you are going to take action. So the person to release that information. Exactly. So that's But another way is this way. Mm -hmm. Okay. If someone filled the DSA 260 for you correctly mm -hmm. for using your correct information. Let them do that way. Go to the form. Let's go to the website, DV, uh, the form which is uh, dvprogram.state.gov, the form to apply, and go to check the results and click I forgot password, I, I forgot confirmation number. Tell you know, the thing is, the people who do that, who hold your case number, they use their own email address. They're very no. Oh, that is the mistake, yes. Yeah, they, they use their own email yeah, address. so I you assume they use your email address. No, they use their email address. So you need that email address because they'll send the information to that email address. Oh, so that is a mistake because I assume... Yeah, it, I mean, it I, I, be very... That's why when I, I even advise people to apply for the green card lottery, make sure you create your own email, you create your own password, and make sure you save them. Because I saw somebody, somebody in Kenya who was actually completing their green card lottery for people for free so they'd be like you just come i complete your green card lottery and if you win that's when you pay but the way they do it they use their own email so that when you win they'll be like give me a hundred thousand before i give so you your that's the problem when you say when you win but when you win they charge you one thousand i mean five thousand dollar i mean yeah. better to from the beginning okay for me i charge you ten dollar you mm -hmm. come and charge you ten dollar the transaction is over if you really want my service now to fill the visa form, and uh, that is a different transaction. Mm -hmm. But this one is just a feeling. Because they know for sure, yes, I'm not charging you. If I apply for 100 people, definitely at least two to three people, mm -hmm. I mean, will win. So if it happens five, and they go to charge you 3,000, 5,000, how many people they are, they are going to, I'm going to get money? So you might get more than that, but that's not fair. Yeah. yeah. Better to charge a small amount, and the transaction is over. We have the uh, you know the YouTube channels to educate people. We're like if you need to apply for the green card lottery, one you can do it yourself. The form is very easy. Number two, if you need to pay somebody, make sure you are paying them. They are completing it. They are professionals. They know how to take the correct pictures. And then after that, they give you hand you over the confirmation number so that when you win, you find out yourself and not them. Yeah, that's why like when we are planning for people, like number one. If you don't get the confirmation number, call our office. We send it to you also to the to our WhatsApp. And this year, when we are going to do this year, we are doing differently. Uh, number one, we send also like to your email and to your to your WhatsApp number. Just you have both copies. Mm -hmm. Don't tell oh I didn't I don't find my my number. No, we want you to have it, and we want you to check. Obviously, we'll check on your end if you haven't to, to notify you that you you have won. But because it's not fair someone god gave that grace gift whatever opportunity to win the lottery and then you are going to put another burden to them who do that happen. they have intentions they have intention the intention is once this person wins i'm gonna get them to either bring my family to the u.s not understanding that you know what they might marry your relative but then when you go to the embassy usually like if you're married they grill you they'll be like okay where did you guys meet where do you live? So you would be able to get away with it. Today I posted a video on my YouTube. Mm -hmm. How do they determine the bona fide marriage? Sometimes they might put in different rooms. What mm -hmm. do you do? Eat for breakfast? Exactly. And then, oh, I ate this one and someone, oh, I, I didn't have breakfast at all. 
where do you live whatever so sometimes it's better just if if you want to apply for people you want to help them help them if you want to do business tell them up front this is the amount i charge mm -hmm. but not like when you you win then i put you a captive you cannot survive without me no more about uh, DSC 260 and i didn't want to that's how i say the, the timeline that's why I you don't need to rush especially for people who don't have high school i mean if you have bachelor degree you have high school you are good mm -hmm. but if you don't have high school your entire lifeline depends on your work experience yep but so, then this is the question like if somebody completed that they finished university they went to university but then they didn't you know people just completed because they anticipate that they will graduate this year and then something happened they fail a class they don't graduate so can they use high school degree if they completed on the application that they finish university yes but if your university even if you haven't finished you like you, you is four years program or three years you quit at the second year your education is higher is a it's just like you, you, yeah, it's higher than high school so you go with the results of university you had so they just need a bare so the basic bare minimum is high is high school so once you have your high school you are you're all set. that's why even in the application they call some college courses meaning you are at the university either currently studying whether you dropped out you are you but you went to the university on youtube it's important that we share with all our friends relatives because guess what people don't want to share this information how many relatives do you know that were in america before you got here and they never told you how to get here they never didn't tell you about the green card they didn't tell you about schools they didn't tell you about anything because once people get here they just want to when they come home they want you to think oh this is my relative from abroad you know they want to be worshipped instead of like, okay, let me uplift somebody. If I bring somebody here, they don't have to ask me for money. They can work. So you're empowering them versus just giving them fish, you know? So that's what our people, our African people need to learn. Like if you know of opportunities, share with your friends, share with everybody. Because guess what? Even if somebody comes here, Texas is so big. Like even if like yeah. we bring all of Kenya to Texas, we still don't feel up that so we have room for people how about not sharing that information with everybody that's what we need to do very true do you have anything else you want to add on the ds 260 uh what i can add is this way uh make sure that uh you try as 100 possible whatever to put the truth in that form mm -hmm. they might not be applicable you might, you might get the visa but down the road you want to become ceo you want to become fbi whatever they might look back on your background and can come to hunt you so there are certain information simple for instance like someone to say i visited china visited this country you oh because i have new passport there is no visa let me lie but mm -hmm. down the road they you, you have social security you have uh, social media accounts over there Mm -hmm. so by law you have to put your social media accounts your phone number they see all the pictures you have been good having good time in china or yeah. india so they say you, you said you have never been there and everything is electronic now like they will catch up with you yeah and another thing which i, I last one on the dsc 260 even 160 for those non-immigrant if you plan to go to western world you have to watch on your social media what you post what you like what you comment Mm -hmm. all these kind of things uh don't promote violence you might be odinga's supporter you say yeah don't uh, support you Ruto to be president you they see you you have stones you want to you want to destroy your only president and then you, someone posts a comment about biden or oh, this old man must be better to die you like that comment oh so you have bad intention you want your president to be a president now you want american president to die mm -hmm. they're telling you because you are a threat on mm -hmm. national security that's important that's a very important point with the social media people are just getting reckless you you, you see the post about uh, the uh maybe like your summer bin laden or the post about the uh, uh, us getting out of afghanistan you start going there full engage like you you <laughs> like the picture for Osama bin laden like the, i mean whatever your opinion is it might be correct but some of mm -hmm. things you don't need to post on social media yeah. because when they go back those are the things they're going to look at and people are asking can you hide like you know some people will be like i'll open another facebook and then i'm gonna hide and put the new facebook 
and then this one they wouldn't be able to see it because they don't realize this facial recognition like that's a it's a known technology that they will they'll just find out and even it is written in the instruction we are using facial recognition <laughs> yeah because there's a tendency even like in the application I, I, Ernest Bonifas Makurilo, I apply as first person, and they go Bonifas Ernest Makurilo, second person, Makurilo Ernest Bonifas is the third person. No, <laughs> facial recognition is the same person. Yeah. That's stupid. They'll know, like if it's social media, if you are tagged in a photo, so you deactivated your account, but you are tagged in a photo of somebody who has an account, that will link you back to you. And even if you, know, you, delete, you delete a photo, the photo is on Google, whatever yeah. system is there. Just go and Google your name. You will see the photos which is, they are not linked to your any account. It is there. You, I don't know how to, it is there. The yeah. best way, don't post. If you don't want certain things to be on the social media. Yes, they're not going to look smaller things like you are drinking or smoking, whatever. But they are looking like certain things like this pattern. Terrorism, something that... Yeah, can... you are working with the knife like in the middle of, 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 of Nairobi Square, whatever it is. Oh, this guy. <laughs> or, or with a rock, you're ready to... Yeah, you have a rock like... It. And the police are there. So, mm, this guy comes here. And here there's a second amendment. If he has a gun, this person will destroy all Americans. Yeah. So they deny you the visa. So you have to watch out what you post because on social media and phone numbers are required by law to post them on your DSC2C. Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Ernest. For, we thank you for having you today on this channel. You've really educated us a lot because there are some things that I know a lot of my viewers didn't know about it. Some of them I'm learning from you, you're learning from me. So yes. I really appreciate your time and all this information that you've provided today. Thank you so much for having me and you. Keep up with the good work on your YouTube channel. If you check on May 6th and then you find out that you did not win and you still want to come to America, I have options available for you to come to America. So you're going to go to nafulaconnect.com. The website is nafulaconnect.com. And then you're going to click on Nafula Academy. Then you get to this page here which uh, is Nafula Academy. So it says you sign up if you're a foreign trained nurse interested in immigrating to the United States of America as a registered nurse. For right now, we are only accepting registered nurses who have NCLEX. So if you do not have NCLEX, then what you need to do, you need to go here and enroll to be registered for NCLEX in New York. So you can take the NCLEX and become a registered nurse in the state of New York. And that way, then you can be able to immigrate to the United States as a registered nurse. Another option, if you are a student and you wanna come here as a student, you can apply for university in the United States. And what you need to do before you even book the consultation, you need to send us your academic documents. So you send us your documents and then we'll look at them. And then if we see that you qualify to apply for college here, then we'll contact you to book a consultation and then we'll help you apply for college depending on what you need. If you just need us to advise you on what you need to do, you'll just pay the consultation $50 and then you'll have to apply for college and everything else yourself. But then if you want us to do everything, you have to book this package and it's $850. So if you want to come to university in the United States of America and you don't know where to start, then you can send us your academic documents. We'll review them and then we'll advise you if you need to book a consultation. If you don't qualify for college here, we won't even ask you to book a consultation because that will be unfair on your side. So we'll only ask you to book a consultation if we've reviewed your papers and come in that you can qualify for either undergraduate studies or graduate studies, which is a master's degree or postgraduate, which is a PhD. To contact us or to send us your academic documents, you're gonna click on the about page here. And then on this page here, when you come here, it tells you how you can contact us. You can either send an email, usually we recommend like you have a quick question, you can just type your name here, your email, your phone number, and then you can type your message or your question here. If you want to find us on social media, then you can go, this is our YouTube, our Facebook, our Instagram, and our Twitter. We don't use Twitter as much, but then if you send a message on Facebook, Instagram, um, or just uh, comment on uh, one of our YouTube videos, 
then we'll get back to you. Let me know if you have any questions and thanks for watching. Thank you.